So let's do an example of calculating what a Jacobian is for that uh, case of the two-dimensional rigid transformation. So I've got my, uh, my function f shown up here in the upper right. And the first component of f, that would be f1 with respect to x1, would be the derivative with respect to theta of that first row, which is cosine theta xa1 minus sine theta ya1 plus tx. So that just comes out to be um, minus sine of theta xa1 minus cosine of theta ya1. And no, no uh, tx. So just filling the other ones in, the second, the derivative of f1 with respect to x2 would just be equal to 1 because that's just tx. So I would get for the Jacobian minus this, what I just computed, sine of theta xa1 minus cosine theta ya1. The second column is a 1. The third column is a 0. Second row, I'm going to get cosine theta xa1 minus sine theta ya1. This is going to be a 0 in this column and a 1 in that column. And we continue down for all four points. So this is going to be um, a 2n by 3 matrix. OK, let's, before we implement that in MATLAB, just review what a function is. Uh, we declare a function using this syntax. We put it in a file with the name of the function, in this case called myfun. We call it then anywhere uh, in the same directory or wherever we have this is in our path. And here's an example of a function that computes uh, mean and standard deviation and returns that. And I could just call it using this syntax here. This is handy here to put the comments um, underneath the function declaration so that if you type help in the name of the function, it just prints these comments. OK, so let's look at how to transform one point, writing a function to transform one point. We're going to pass in the coordinates of the point called Pn. Y is going to be the coordinates of our output, and X is the parameters that define the transformation, namely theta, Tx, and Ty. So the first thing the function does is extract the parameters from X. I create the 2D rigid transformation matrix here. I multiply the matrix times my point, and I just return the first two rows here. If I want to transform a set of points, if I'm passing in um, a set of points, n points, let's say, where each point is in each column, um, I do the same thing. Then h multiplied by that matrix generates, uh, it, it transforms each of the points and generates a 3 by n output matrix. So I just want the first two rows. And let's say I want the result, uh, the resulting x, y coordinates all to be in a one-dimensional vector like this. So I can reshape the three or two by n matrix into a uh, two n by one matrix using MATLAB's reshape function. So the syntax of this is that it's going to take this matrix and produce a matrix that is this many rows by this many columns. I didn't tell it how many rows I wanted, so MATLAB will compute that from the size of this matrix, but it will just have one column in it. OK, so to uh, do that for my 2, 2D rigid transformation, I'm going to use the, um, this is the uh, nonlinear least squares algorithm that I had earlier. This is the first half of the code where I read in the points 
I'm sorry, I, I define the points and uh, get the initial guess. And this is the second half of the algorithm where um, it does a loop where it um, computes the current estimate of y given the, the current uh, parameters, calculates the residual between that and my measured points, fill in the zeros of j, I haven't shown that here, I'll show that in a second, uh, computes the correction to x, and then tests to see if the parameters are no longer changing, and finally adds the correction to x. So this portion shows the missing piece that fills in the value of j using the um, equations we just looked at, namely sine of theta times x minus cosine theta times y, and then the 1 and the 0 and so forth. So this loops fills in um, two rows at a time of my Jacobian matrix j. And finally, this, um, well, let me run this first. I'll grab, I'll grab this code. And the next page, which is this. And um, I also have my um, function f rigid here that I, I showed earlier.